Hi, everybody. We are back, STRU Podcast. I am joined by the ever so wonderful Richard Fertig. Hello, hello. Hi, Erica. Welcome to the STRU Podcast, your number one online hosting community, helping you achieve your goals through short term rental investing. Now, here's your host, Richard Fertig. <laughs> How are you? You know, uh, very, very well. And you? Great. I am um, I'm awesome today. Thanks for asking. It's a gorgeous day. It is. Yeah. A no gorgeous complaint. day. Yes. 100%. And we take full advantage of gorgeous days like this. We do. We do. Um, we start our days off right. Ready to rock and roll. Well, why don't you share with... like, You know what? People always ask about sort of positive mindset, how I accomplish everything that we get done and so on and so forth. And it really right. starts with morning routines or setting yourself up for success or whatever it is. So right. why don't you share with the audience? I think they might find this quite interesting, sort of what our morning routine looks like, uh, certainly here in the Outer Banks of North yeah. Carolina. It changes for sure. But so here in the Outer Banks, we um, typically wake up, well, I typically wake up around I can't wait to hear this <laughs> I, I'm literally waiting I want to say that I ideally like to wake up earlier than I do but ideally I typically like to wake that's so soft are so, you like bullshitting the audience here tell them what time you wake up come on I typically wake up around 7 30 like wake yeah. up and like exit bed or no, like wake no, up wake up i typically wake up around 7 30. we'll go with it yeah and then um i mean i'm usually like ready to start the day out of bed really you know um embracing the day i would say around eight very reasonable and and yeah yeah i think that that works yeah um, My day starts a little earlier, but... Yeah, I don't know what time you wake up, but you're usually rocking and rolling before I am. I am indeed, and yes. I wake up naturally. I don't set an alarm clock. I just I sort of... I don't either. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Let me know. Um, you you Let don't me set know. an alarm clock because you've got me. Yes. Where... Um, if it gets much past 7.30, you're my alarm clock. Much past 7.30. Right. Then you um, typically come in. Okay, so here's what we should do. Yes. Let's just, now that we've, we're up, let's we're go up. through the, the routine and then yes. I'll circle back with what I get done uh, while you're still sleeping. Okay. Okay, so what do we do? So um, we typically change out of our jammies and uh, you make coffee while um, I kind of get the dogs ready to go for our morning walk on the beach, the ocean. So um, usually with a cup of coffee in hand, we take the dogs out for a 45 minute beach um, on the ocean, which is insanely beautiful and amazing. Yeah. And it's, uh, I think one of your most favorite things. It, it literally is. I yeah. mean, just that, that quiet time in the morning with the waves breaking and the birds, and there's very few people out there and absolutely gorgeous beach and just connecting with the nature and sort of off grid and apart from all of the stuff that happens later in the day um, is remarkable and we're we're walking on just the most gorgeous beach yeah. I don't know how far it is exactly we haven't really timed it but it's maybe a mile a mile and a half down and then there's a um, roped off area where uh, I, I don't know like whatever yeah well what it is is uh, it's it's reserved for uh, piping plovers and a few other um, I don't know endangered species of birds and those are nesting areas so we walk the exact same distance every single day because we walk to the end where we can no longer pass and then we turn around and come back and um, I, I really uh, value it and cherish that time and I know the dogs do too and I think yes. you enjoy it plenty I do, I do. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but we have learned um, that we need to get out earlier rather than later because we have uh, a significantly older dog who doesn't do well in the in the heat and then we've got a french bulldog that doesn't do well in the heat 
So this is really kind of cramping Erica's style because, you know, we have to get up earlier to go do this before the, right. the, the sun hits and the right. humidity and so on. Right. And, so I um, love for the dogs. Right. I am making a conscious effort to rise and shine earlier. Okay. So we go have this wonderful walk on yes. the beach. Yep. Come, Come back. back. And what's next? Peloton. Peloton. Yes. We have installed two Pelotons yes. in our uh, residence here in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Yes. We also have a couple of Pelotons for the Edge Camp gym yes. that we're going to launch in about a year. Yes. Uh, we have and the we space have reserved. And we have an Edge Camp Peloton in Edge Camp. In the, Edge in Camp gym. the big house currently. Right. So we've got five Pelotons, no waiting, just right. Peloton all day long. Yes. Uh, yes. But that's remarkable. And, and one of the nice things when we thought about this morning routine, uh, certainly would have been cheaper or less expensive to buy one Peloton, but I just thought it was really important for us to do it together. Yep. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I'm a huge uh, cycling enthusiast, but I'm out of my groove. And I find Erica saying, hey, let's get on the Peloton, really, really helpful, right? So like get yourself a buddy, get yourself a teammate, get yourself a kid, a husband, a girlfriend, a boyfriend. Get yourself a kid. Get your kid to help you. Get yeah. A kid. Yeah. Okay. Well, and what I would say is as soon as I encourage that, I immediately regret it because I don't even know, like, I don't even know how you can say that you're out of your group because you've got what? You've, you've got a few years on me. Let's just leave it at that. And yet you beat me every time. I don't think, I think, is it accurate to say that you beat me every ride? It is. <laughs> It is infuriating. Not really. It is. It is. I, I don't know. That has to stop. It just has to stop. I can't understand. I don't understand why. Anyway, so that's a work in progress. I will keep you posted on how that's going. Um, but that's, yeah, so we go from Peloton to um, the cold plunge. Nope. Yes. Okay. We go from the Peloton to the swimming pool. We have now turned the swimming pool into our bathtub um, where we get all the sweat off. And then we go into the uh, 45 degree cold plunge for eight minutes each. Which, mind you, yes. um, is perhaps unusual to many, yep. uh, perhaps torture to many. Yep. But um, <laughs> when we discuss positive mindset and mind over matter and sort of like, I can't tell you how much I enjoy the cold plunge. Um, it's a game changer. It really, really is. Uh, there, there's, there's, uh, anatomic reasons that it makes sense, right? It's kind of like cold. And so it's good for, um, your joints and, uh, keeping inflammation down, just like you ice something or um, you go to get cryo. So, you know, the, the cold helps a lot with inflammation, which is actually a really challenging thing as you get older. Um, so it's good for that. But what I find, and I think it's good for circulation, and there's all sorts of other studies that it say it's good for, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's got lots of benefits. Right. Um, those are just gravy on top for me. Totally. Uh, for me, it really, helps me comprehend how powerful the mind is. Uh, because when I go into that cold plunge, I don't focus on how cold it is. In fact, I ignore it uh, and or look forward to it and like am excited by it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what I do, uh, and you can share what you do, uh, I say to myself, uh, affirmations and incantations things that you don't say them to yourself well i say them out loud right um i actually chant them and so i sound like a maniac but right. you know maybe i am maybe i am a maniac say la vie um but but i say things to myself in the um self-loving affirmative, affirmative mm -hmm. positive i talk about what i want uh, my life to look like what i want to happen uh, i focus on you know what i've taught also I focus on what I want to happen, not what I'm, I don't want to happen. So often we spend all the time like, oh, I don't want this to happen. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose money. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And if you're spending all of your day 
and time and energy worried about like what you don't want to happen, like we said in the first podcast, you're not creating any room for what you do want to happen. And so consequently, it doesn't happen. Right. So I start my day. But I think it's also really important that you clarify that you don't speak as though it's happening in the future. No. You speak as though... I and, am. Yeah. This is happening right, right now. Right. right. So um, this is very personal and I'm not going to share all of the personal details, but just to give you an example, I say things to myself like... I am a real estate developer. I am a boutique hotel owner. I am an educator. Um, I am real estate developer. What else? A fund manager. Not sure. Um, yep. And and we all know that, right? Uh, and I know that too. But when we discuss who we are, uh, the more that I can really like own all of that, because I've never done any of this before, right? It's not like I come from a long lineage of YouTubers, right? This is all like brand new. And so I'm constantly reinventing myself. And by telling myself that this is who I am and that I'm good at it and I'm capable and I'm changing lives and I'm creating insane opportunities in edge camp and helping the community, like by, by just reinforcing all of this while I'm also sitting in a 45 degree cold plunge, that most people would be freaking out and screaming and kicking and jumping out of. There's just something magical about that mind over matter. Absolutely. And it like literally gets ingrained in every single cell. And I like own it, you Absolutely. know, and I own it. And it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. Do you share any, you care to share any of your uh, incantations? <laughs> and by the way, a lot of this is borrowed from Tony Robbins, who does a cold plunge uh, himself. And he's shared all the benefits. And that's why I decided to experiment with it and ultimately uh, love it so much that we bought one for our place here in the Outer Banks. I'm in the process of ordering one for our place in Nosara, uh, our place in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It's freezing cold already. We're there in the winter, so we don't really need <laughs> to do that. Just, yeah, just yeah. jump in the snow. Uh, but in any event, um, that's where this inspiration came from. And I want to give credit to Tony. And if you find this inspiring and you try it, you know, just know maybe Richard and Erica drove you to try it. Whatever, just giving credit where credit's due. Totally, yeah. Um, so I have a little bit different um, way of going about, I don't know, expressing my incantations, um, which I know that <laughs> mystifies you. But I, I don't say them out loud. I typically just, um, my internal dialogue <laughs> seems to be loud enough. So. I um, sometimes I'll mouth them, but I will say over and over again repeatedly kind of to myself or, or in my own mind, um, you know, the message that I really want to focus on or drill down on or, um, you know, just what I want, how I want to show up and what I want my reality to be. Um, you know, one of the things that I guess I will share, as you know, you did is that, um, I say, you know, over and over again, part of my incantations is I will inspire a team, I will grow a team, and I will lead a team. Um, because I think that that's really foreign to me. It's very foreign to me to, um, I don't know, to kind of be the human resources of our team and to have so many team members that are doing so many different things at any, you know, um, different you know, different places, different times, different challenges, different strengths, different love languages, different communication styles, all of that. Um, and that it's also incredibly important um, as I'm learning that I can grow and I can inspire a team without being uh, the most, you know, popular kid on the block. That I don't it's not necessary to be well liked it's um, more important to be respected it's more important to inspire it's more important to grow and um, and lead an individual as opposed to uh, I don't know sometimes it's not helpful to cater to them you know, yeah not they're, they're not they're looking, looking for a friend do, right right yeah they have enough of those so, so I think it's um, you know and then you know my, my internal dialogue is is 
It can be not really, healthy. No, no, it's not. It's really, really freaking mean. It's really mean. So, um, so maybe I can just take a moment here and um, share with the audience and you too, you know, just how proud I am of your growth. Thanks. Right? Um, when we met just a couple of short years ago, you'd never done any of this. None of it. Right? And you've just stepped in. Um, you've been given an awful lot of responsibility and an awful lot of canvas and asked to paint and figure it out. And that's one of the things that I'm most proud of as a person is trying to grow others. Um, and I'm getting emotional and it's warranted and it's heartfelt. Um, but I feel like in my prior life where everything was based on accreditation and what school did you go to and who did you work with and how much money did you make and everything was all about like socioeconomic prestige and accomplishments and accreditation and like you can't come in here unless you have a PhD or you graduated from this school or you're not a member of this club and um, not that I'm rebelling against that but I realize just how much more there is to life than like who you know or who opened the door for you and so this YouTube channel and this podcast uh, is really an effort to take a lot of the things that I'm very grateful for, my education, my background, my experience, my investment mind, my uh, ability to find new trends early and turn them into profits and so on, is really an opportunity to give back to so many who don't have all of that. And for those of you who know uh, the story about Eric and I and how we started dating a couple of years ago, you know that we came from very different backgrounds with very different skills and beliefs and financial resources and just we couldn't be any more different. Uh, and for the longest time, she didn't think that she could be helpful to me or to any of my businesses. And um, I disagree. She's been, you know, a major positive influence on me personally, major positive influence on uh, our businesses, including this podcast and STRU Live and the future course and everything else. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, She's a natural at dealing with people and the relationships and human resources. And it just takes that off my plate. And for those of you who have known sort of my methodology, you know that if there's anybody anywhere on the planet who can do anything that I can delegate to, uh, I'm going to. And by doing that, it leaves space and time for me to focus on the things that I'm uniquely qualified to do that others can't do. Uh, so if I'm doing all this other work that everyone else can do, then I don't have any time to focus on growing myself and growing you and growing these different businesses and looking forward 10 years and so on. It's only because I'm able to find incredible people and, and not even find. It's more like attract, right? Like that's the, that's the positive mindset, optimism. You have to have some faith uh, in all of this. But literally... We're like a magnet, you know, all the people that work for us at Edge Camp, all the people that work for us in all of our different properties, um, they all found us. We didn't list a help wanted ad. We didn't, people are attracted to what it is that we're doing. They're attracted to us as individuals. And so in finding these high quality people, one of the most important things we can do is empower them, mm -hmm. trust them know that they're going to make mistakes and stub their toe and not like yell and freak out, like live with it. So what? Who cares? And so, you know, Erica is uh, a case in a prime example. You know, two years ago, you didn't have the confidence, the wherewithal. I remember you saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. Like all these self-limiting beliefs. And I was like, babe, sink or swim. <laughs> Figure and, it out. And, yeah, and now you're like this Olympic swimmer, you know? <laughs> you're like swimming in the big leagues. Well, I haven't drowned. Maybe that's more accurate. <laughs> no, but seriously, in any event, before we, before we move on from this, I just really think it's important that you recognize and that I acknowledge and that the audience members listen because they might be two years away from being an Olympic swimmer. Yeah. 
Yeah. It doesn't feel like it, right? Like if I told you two years ago, oh, oh you're going to oversee yeah. all of our human resources department, all of our event planning, you're going to be the director of hospitality, you're going to close $75,000 deals, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to be on the podcast, you'd be like, you got the wrong girl. Right. Like I'm not doing any of that. Right. I've never done it before, nor do I know how, nor do I want to. Right. And here you are two short years later and you're crushing it. Yeah. So... I hope this is inspirational for those of you that are listening that are saying, yeah, well, you know, Richard can do it because of this, or Richard can do it because he had the education, or Richard can do it because he made money, or Richard can, like, there's always reasons that we say other people can do it, but the reality is we could all do it. You have to make those opportunities for yourself, or you have to find those opportunities and then take advantage of them. You can't just, like, let them pass by. Yeah. Well, thank you. I do have to say what I'm most proud of the last two years is my relationship with you and, and the girls. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. And it's... I think that's, that's definitely... That's the word. Well, and I would say the same, you know. Uh, and so for those of you that are either in, in bad relationships or no relationship or seeking relationship or anything, just realize, like, we met totally randomly at the airport. So your life can change like that. Right. It doesn't matter. It's worth all the frogs you kiss. Just for the record, I kissed no <laughs> frogs. You're like I you might have been frogs. out there kissing frogs. I was kissing frogs. Yeah, you were kissing frogs. I was not. Ah. So, um, all right. <laughs> anyway, I think and we then should. Then we go. Wait. So, so then we go from. We're going back to the. Off. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. So we're now back to the morning routine. Back to the morning routine. We go from cold plunge incantations into. Brief sesh in the jacuzzi. The hot tub. Hot tub. And then it's like go time at yeah. that point. Then we kind of figure out, we, you know, through conversation outline what the day looks like, whether it's content, filming, Zooms. Um, All of the above. Construction, management, guest, yeah. hospitality, yeah. quotes, pricing, yeah. recording videos, recording podcasts. I mean, it's, it's on. Yes. Um, yeah. There's not a lot. Yeah. Not a lot of, not a lot of downtime. No. And it's fantastic. And we'd it's have it no other way. Awesome. Absolutely. But now yeah. that that's our morning routine, I do right. think it's uh, important to, to help the listeners understand what, what I do in the wee hours while you're still getting some beauty rest. In the wee so hours. yeah, in the in the wee hours. So I generally wake up uh, around 6 a.m. naturally, and uh, when I'm good, I don't pick up my phone immediately, and I spend some time uh, reflecting and saying some gratitude exercises. When I'm bad, I just pick up the phone and oh, look at her. <laughs> I didn't know that. You're snoring. Oh you know? my gosh, I'm not doing that. Snoring a little drool. No. Yeah, not a little a bit. Story. Just a little. Not even. But then I wipe it. <laughs> anyway, um, so I try not to pick up my phone immediately. Uh, sometimes I succeed, sometimes I fail. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I at least try. That's so great. Um, it's really important that you get like the day started right. And then, you know, my phone is generally just an overwhelming number of emails and responses and people needing things and so on. And so not that it's negative in any way, but it's certainly like can be anxiety producing or overwhelming or say like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. Right. So I try to spend even just a minute or two acknowledging all the things that I'm grateful for and how great everything is right. to set myself up for like that deluge of like, we need this now and right. where's this and what's going on and we got turnover same day and you know like all right. that flood of stuff um but the point of this more than anything is uh i've set up a system yes of um updates on all of my different businesses so i get um slack reports that i've developed with hardik for those of you who don't know who hardik is he basically runs everything on the back end he's our developer he does just about um, everything to keep yeah. all of the different organizations running smoothly. And so what we've developed over the course of the last few years are uh, KPI, key performance indicators, for every single different business, every single different property, every single different uh, revenue and expense stream. 
And so I get pushed to me via Slack um, these daily reports and updates. And so it includes, you know, for STRU, it'll tell me how many new subscribers we got on a daily basis and how many new Facebook users we got and how many posts and how many likes and how many shares and whatever the key performance indicators are uh, as I grow my online content. Um, that's what I get for there. And then for say edge camp, it'll share with me, um, how much revenue we have in new bookings and website views and Instagram followers. And again, just get a really high level profile of, of what's happening. Um, for my boutique hotels, we talk about new reservations that came in where we are versus a year ago, uh, what our occupancy rate is, what our ADR is, uh, what the revenue is for the next 30 days looking forward. Um, and so on. And so literally in about, I don't know, six minutes, I can instantly understand which of my businesses are doing well, which are struggling, which need my help, which need my attention, uh, which key decisions I need to make. Hey, let's lower the price. Hey, let's increase the price. Uh, hey, let's run a special, um, whatever. Hey, we're giving it away. Let's raise the price. Uh, you know, so I like very, quickly just walk into this cockpit, this instrumentation, and without a lot of thought or analysis, I just read what's in front of me and I know how to interpret it. And it's kind of interesting, uh, and I don't mean this in a critical way, but I mean to grow you, the, the listener. Um, you know, these numbers to me have meaning, right? They tell a story. Uh, and I've learned to, to read these numbers and to tell a story and how to interpret them. So by way of example, if I walked into a doctor's office and I looked at, you know, an x-ray, if there was a really obvious break, I'd be like, hey, there's a problem there. I don't know what the problem is, but like I see something wrong. But like there's an art to that, right? The really good x-ray technicians can see things that I don't even see when they, even when they point it out. Or um, so Hardik, for instance, will often report these things without a lot of interpretation or meaning and he's not seeing the same opportunities, risks, threats, concerns, you know, wins, like he just reports it. Right. And I look at this report that he's prepared and I interpret it super quickly and I know exactly what dial to turn. It's kind of like said differently. If you walked into the cockpit of a Boeing, you know, 747 as a layman like I, I would be like, oh my God, look at that instrumentation panel. I have no idea what any of that means. But now if you're a pilot, you walk in, you're like, I need to look at that. And that's important. Oh, everything else looks fine. You know exactly where to focus. And so we've created these systems in uh, all of our businesses. It's all automated. It's all pushed to me. It all comes via Slack. And I spend about six minutes looking at all of the daily reports. And then I spend about the next six minutes fine tuning, tweaking, whatever, sharing with Hardik what he needs to focus on for that day. And then I turn to my emails and all the rest of that while the princess is still sleeping. When I finish going through my, you know, how many uh, emails I need to respond to and all the rest of that, then we wake her up gently and softly and <laughs> lovingly. <laughs> and then we get on with our morning routine. Right. So good. Right? Yeah. So, so good. So um, we hope that this is interesting and helpful. And, and yeah. if your day starts off differently, and I'm sure it does, um, are there elements of this that would be helpful? You know, maybe yeah. you don't need to cold plunge and maybe you can't walk on the beach, but can you take your dogs to the park? Can yeah. you get some exercise? Can you, you know, take a minute to relax when this is all done too? You know, I used to go to the gym when I lived in New York City and I would always end the gym session by going into the steam and it's the same sort of thing. Just allowing myself to decompress and unwind and let it all go and then go start the day yeah, feeling, the yeah, feeling rested and rejuvenated and excited. Uh, cause you know, life is a grind, Absolutely. right? It's, it's, it's a grind and there's so many things that can set you back and weigh on you and have a gray day or a negative day. And I'm not immune from them and either are you, but we do everything we can. Oh, you are immune. <laughs> she's like, I mean, she's like, speak for yourself. Right. No, but seriously, I mean, just stop and think for a second. If you get nothing else from this podcast, just realize that everybody has right. problems and challenges, financial and health and relationships and kids and schools. And you know, like 
there's nobody on the planet, no matter how successful you are, that's immune from life. Yeah. The difference between the people that are really successful and not is how they deal with those challenges, how they overcome them, how they don't let them stop them, how they persevere, how they you know, move forward, how they view these negative things as opportunities to learn or grow or whatever, right? And so it all goes back to the same thing, which is the mindset and goes back to, you know, if you can sit in a 45 degree freezing cold plunge and view that as pleasant, then you can go view, you know, some upset guest or some upset employee or some financial crisis or whatever in a different fashion because you can literally control your emotions and your mindset and, and also your physiological, like, you know, we don't feel the cold when we're in there, right. right? So like we're training ourselves to be above mind, you know, mind over matter. Right. It's a thing. So fix your mornings and you'll have a totally different day. Totally. Yeah. All right. Should we move on? Yeah. So, um, got a couple of questions here. Cool. Um, from some of our Facebook friends. Great. Jessica wants to know how to find and select a quality real estate agent in a real, in a remote market when you have no personal contacts yet. Uh, when you're a small fish. Cool. Um, so this is a multi-tiered response to a very straightforward question. The first thing uh, is, you know, I appreciate you sharing with me that you are a small fish, uh, but I don't think you should really refer to yourself as such. Because if that's what you think you are, then that's going to be your reality. And we just spent this whole beginning part of the session talking about our morning routines and affirmations and incantations and saying who we are. So you might say, if you feel like you're a small fish, I am a small fish today, but tomorrow I'm a big fish. If you want to be a big fish, but you can't just describe yourself as a small fish. And I'll give another real life example. Uh, we had a situation here at Edge Camp. We had a professional photographer that we wanted to come photograph the pool and the cabana and that whole addition. Um, my go-to professional photographer was unavailable and she referred me to somebody that she thought very highly of. And this individual came and he's highly qualified and a really great guy. And I look forward to working with him. And I've seen his, his um, I went to his website before we hired him. And then I, subsequently I've seen the work that he did for us over at Edgecam and it's spectacular. And so um, when we were speaking in person, he said to me, oh yeah, you know, I really look up to her and she's fantastic and she has a lot more experience than I do. And so she's just incredibly talented and I hope that I, you know, like I'm not quite that good, but I hope that one day I can be. And I sort of looked at him and I said, you know, with all due respect, I think you are that good now. Like I've been to your website and I think in many ways you might even be superior to that. But if you keep telling yourself that you're inferior or like you're second rate and she's superior, then that's the reality, right? Like if you can't convince yourself that you're at that par, and you're telling all of your guests that you're inferior, then that's your reality. Everyone's gonna think you're inferior. So like, you can't say that to yourself. Um, so I appreciate you sharing with me that it's, you're a small fish because I think in your mind, you believe that that's a limiting belief. I'm sorry, a limiting fact. And like, if you're a big fish, you can come into a remote town that you don't have any relationships and you can get all the best brokers. And that's not actually true. So you, whatever your assumption is, uh, isn't exactly accurate. Uh, all of the deals I've done when I came into the Outer Banks of North Carolina, I was a small fish too, and I didn't own any property and I didn't have any knowledge here or any family connection relationships or anything. So I just showed up here. Um, I was a very small fish and now I'm a very big fish. I'm the second largest landowner on Hatteras Island behind the U S government. And they own 95% of this barrier Island preserved in perpetuity as national seashore. And then there's, you know, me second largest. Um, and, and the way the most handsome fish, the most handsome fish for and sure, fish. big fish, handsome fish. Um, no, but in all seriousness, uh, it's a very valid question. I think it starts with your mindset. If you present to 
brokers that you're a small fish and you're not going to make a big investment and you're not worthy of their time. No one's going to give you that time. No one's going to invest in you. But if you say, you know, the same set of facts like, hey, I've never been to Hatteras Island. I'm going to get started small. I'm going to make one initial investment. I'm going to see how that works and I'm going to grow my business and I'm going to grow my exposure and I could get larger over time and we could grow this relationship together. You'll have a lot of brokers who are interested in that dialogue. Now, right now, at this point in time, here we are in July of 2021, all housing markets are on fire. It's going to be impossible to get a broker on the phone um, almost anywhere. They're all just so incredibly busy. Like they're just making money hand over fist. But that'll end. And the smart brokers recognize that, you know, they, there's good times and bad times. And it can be kind of cyclical, even though I just filmed the whole video on how this time might be different. So check it out on YouTube about the secular opportunity in the housing market. Um, but was this Jessica? What was her mm -hmm. name? Jessica. Um, but what I would say to you is this, ask good questions, ask them what their experience is with short term rentals, ask them about short term rental rules and regulations, ask them about, you know, uh, any zoning changes, ask them, you know, what's going on, how many people short term rent, what the ADRs are, whatever the questions may be. And if they look at you like most brokers in 2021, like you're, they're clueless, they have no idea, they don't really care, then that's a sign that that's the wrong broker. There's a huge opportunity. I've been meaning to make a video about this forever. I haven't made it, but I just tell everybody that I can. If I were a professional real estate broker, I would literally get up to speed on short-term rentals. I would become a short-term rental expert and that would be my niche and my strategy and my tribe would be all of you that are growing the short-term rental uh, business and I would own the space because there's nobody else doing that, nobody else speaking that articulately about it and yet it's the fastest growing you know, real estate investment strategy that's not operated by uh, institutions yet. It's mom and pop, it's you and I uh, and yet we can't get any help. So there's a huge opportunity for realtors to get knowledgeable, get educated, become short-term rental experts. Because as I mentioned in the last podcast, as I take a look at the 10 year forward look at where short-term rental is going, you know, in 10 years, there's going to be whole shops that only focus on short-term rentals. And the reason is going to be because in vacation areas, predominantly, everybody is going to short-term rent their property because housing prices are going to continue to increase in value so much so that unless you're like a billionaire chances are you go out and you buy that five hundred thousand one million two million three million dollar home just like the super wealthy put their five hundred million dollar mega yachts out for a week rental at like a million dollars a week you have to offset some of these costs the costs are just getting exorbitant so the in the future as i look out 10 years forward Almost every vacation rental home will be short term rented and brokers should be getting on that. And you as a small fish should do everything in your power to stop thinking that you're a small fish, start thinking that you're early in this opportunity set. You're going to accumulate as much as you possibly can, whether it's, you know, through buying, partnering, joint venturing, co-hosting, becoming a realtor, whatever it is, but take advantage of this massive opportunity. And if you can't find a good broker in that area that you want to uh, invest in and you are a real estate professional, maybe you become the broker and you'll make a fortune because everybody's going to be buying short term rentals. So the homes that aren't short term rentals today will be short term rentals 10 years from now. That's my forward looking thesis and um, I have a whole host of additional opportunities and thoughts and how to position ourselves and so on. Uh, that I'll be teaching in the cohort based course, which I'm launching. The first one's going to be July 27th. If you haven't been, uh, if you haven't signed up on the wait list, go to stru.university. That's our website, www.str.university and get on the wait list for one of the cohort based courses. But that's going to be um, six intensive sessions where we zoom together. We do uh, collaborative exercises together. We do offline homework, research, uh, analysis, case studies. Then we combine back into the cohort, create this community of like-minded entrepreneurs. 
and hosts and we learn together, but everything that we're preparing for is to take advantage of this opportunity so that we're positioned intelligently, properly, increasing not only our income and profitability, but also selecting the right locations for massive appreciation, which is where you get massive returns on investment. That's where you generate wealth and that wealth compounds and the sooner you get there, the sooner you get started, the more it compounds and the longer it compounds. And then it's just a win-win. So if you haven't signed up for that cohort based class, consider doing so. Um, you have nothing to lose. 100% money back guarantee because you're going to get far more in return and I'm not worried about it. So um, did that answer the question? I believe so. I thought okay. that was a great answer. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. We have another question. Thank we you, Jessica. Do. Yeah. Um, so Claire says, I love your daily emails, Richard. Thank you so much. Oh, really question. But, um, well, thank you. And actually uh, I just, you should, if you are not receiving yeah. my daily newsletter, every single day, I write a newsletter for over 10,000 of your peers, competitors, co-hosts, friends, family, whatever. Uh, 10,000 plus people get this newsletter on my current thinking, on my day-to-day -day activity in the short-term rental market, on news that I've read. Um, it's just a way for me to be uh, more in-depth and more timely. Uh, the YouTube videos require Logan and the studio and then editing. And so like there's a lag. It's very hard for me to come up with something and then put it in a YouTube video in real time. It's usually a, a little bit more of a process, just like this podcast is a little bit more of a process, but the newsletter, I just have to sit down with my iPad and I can do that and I do it every single day. Uh, if you'd like to get that newsletter, just go to the same website, str.university and sign up for the newsletter. And I can't even believe we haven't said this, but we just launched on July 4th, our brand new STRU website. Oh my gosh, that's right. Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so we're doing all this stuff, yeah. including a brand new website, and we didn't even it's mention so it. Cool. So go check it out. Yeah. I think it's uh, an incredible website. It's a Tell work in progress. Yeah. Always has room for improvement. The website is kind of like your uh, short-term rental listing. It's uh, done at a moment in time, but you constantly have to reinvest and refresh and update, put new photos, new copy, new opportunities, right? To keep it so that it's uh, best in class. So this is uh, our newest version of our website. We haven't done it in probably four years. I think we did it in-house on WordPress with Hardik and Charles and you know, it was, it was yeah. good for where we were at that point in time, really? but then we didn't uh, reinvest in it because we've just been growing quickly and organically and I'm really grateful and I tried to hire a couple of different people to do the, the website and the, just the look, the feel the content, the personalities. Wait the, a second, didn't you find this web designer on STRU or in, didn't she do a yeah, website for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so I'm trying to think exactly what happened, but uh, it might've been through my emails okay. or it might've been through the Facebook group. I don't really recall, but in any event, what you don't know is behind the scenes, when you guys reply to my emails or you um, join the Facebook group or whatever, I'm doing as much uh, intelligence gathering as possible to know like who is my tribe? Like who, yeah. who am I teaching and, and what's important to them? And you know, think of just demographics and I don't really care about demographics so much. I think more of sociographics, but demographics, age, sex, uh, education, wealth, where they live geographically, all of these things kind of matter. You know, my, my, um, course, my website, my podcast would be very different if I was focused on, you know, retirees in Papua New Guinea versus, you know, teenagers in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So I just need to know, Erica's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, in trying to figure out who the audience is and where they are in their journey and how I can be most helpful, I do as much research as I possibly can just to make sure that we're on, you know, spending the right time and energy in the right places. And to your point, one of the new uh, respondents to an email, or maybe it was in Facebook replied and uh, their reply or their background was of interest to me. So I clicked through and then uh, went to their personal website. Right. And at the bottom of their personal website, it said who made their website. And so 
I contacted that company and said, hey, I saw this website that you made for such and such an individual and I kind of liked it. And can you tell me a little bit about your business and how you operate and what your time schedule is and what you charge and so on and so forth. And we ended up hiring them uh, to redo the Short Term Rental University website. I think it came out great. I'd love for you guys to go check it out. Yeah. While you're there, sign up for the email list. Right. Um, and then we also had such a good success with them. We hired them to do our Stomp Capital website, yeah. which um, also came out great. Now that's an earlier stage opportunity, so there's less content on there. But as we start to make investments, um, we'll continue to upgrade that. And for those of you who don't know, Stomp Capital is a fund that I launched, allowing you to co-invest with me if you're an accredited investor. And one of the cool things, which we haven't really announced, but while we're here, we're just gonna keep chatting amongst friends uh, is that Stomp Capital is going to be a really great way to uh, grow host entrepreneurs right. like you if you want to grow and expand and are capital constrained which oh seems gosh, to be really cool. yeah. yeah which seems yeah, yeah, yeah. to be one of your largest limitations when I read your emails back to me is yeah. I need capital I need partners I need co-hosts I need more money I need prices are high so how do I grow yeah. um, so Stomp Capital is going to take money from accredited investors yeah. and we are going to partner with uh, short-term rental graduates of the cohort-based course. So just like Y Combinator, if any of you know what that is in the VC world, where people pitch their startup, or you might think of it as more Shark Tank, if you know that on CNBC, but people who have really good properties that they want to own and buy and have a really good hosting pedigree and hospitality and you know five-star reviews and are doing everything right, except they don't have capital. Yeah. We at Stomp Capital, in our legal documents, have up to 20% of the money that we raise committed to investing in the best STRU students in the best locations with the best future opportunity set. Okay. And so we are going to be um, growing short-term rental opportunity, um, short-term rental hosts and investors and putting our money where our mouth is. And uh, the only requirement to apply for all of this is that you have to successfully graduate from the cohort based class because that's the best training there is, right? right? Like we're gonna invest in people that have the same outlook, methodology, process, systems, beliefs that we do and we're going to grow them and mentor them and so on. Just like people watching uh, Shark Tank wanna partner with whoever, Mark Cuban, because he's got this uh, network and resources and capability and process and systems. Yeah. Um, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Awesome. And so if you think about it, we're uh, taking money from the rich, the accredited, and we're <laughs> reinvesting it, irrespective of yeah. how much money you have. We will fund somebody who has plenty of money. We'll also fund somebody that has no money. We're just looking for the best, the brightest, the coolest opportunities that are all consistent with the teachings from the cohort-based class. So uh, I'm really excited for all I of that. So, so, and so cool. uh, if you go to the Stomp Capital website, there's two different things. If you are an accredited investor, you can sign up to partner with us on, on future deals and you should do that. There's also another tab, I think it says JV with Stomp, um, where we're getting people that have desire to grow and expand but are capital constrained. We wanna hear from you. Um, again, we're only going to be funding the best of the best and the way that we're gonna start that selection process is from graduates from the cohort based class so that we know that everybody has the same education and the same starting playing field mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to do everything in our power just like a good VC to make sure that you're doing your social media right and your direct bookings website right and your marketing right and your photography right and your copy right and I mean we're going to be equity partners alongside you so we want to make sure that um, you've got all the tools um, all the arrows in your quiver so to speak. Very All cool. the tools in the tool chest, arrows in the quiver. There you go. Right? So, yeah. in any event, uh, awesome. new websites. I don't know how we failed to mention that in the update, but that's done. Yeah. And that's been a major, major hassle um, in my own head because, you know, the website is like your front door. 
um, in a retail business. And so like I'm a perfectionist and I want it to be right. And it was never quite good enough. And so then we shelve it, we get started and we shelve it, self-limiting belief. And we finally overcame it. We launched two websites in the last week and I'm super excited. Now we're going to do more and more websites now that I've got a team and a partner and somebody who, you know, understands the way my mind thinks. And, um, it was great. Yeah, yeah, it was great. So I'm really, really excited and proud of that. And I'd yeah. love for you to go to the SGRU website. Give me some feedback. Yeah. Go to the Stomp website. Give me some feedback. Sign up for emails. Yeah. And cool. the course. Very cool. Emails and the course. Exactly. Yes. yes. Awesome. Do we have another question? Um, I, or is that it? I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. I think we're all set. Um, cool. But thank you so much for your time. And My expertise. time. Thank you for your time and your expertise. <laughs> um... Cool. Well, look, here's what I would say. We've now recorded uh, two podcasts. Yes. We are going to include this in our routine. Yes. Uh, I don't know exactly what our goal is to release these, but I would say once a week yeah. sort of feels about right. It's very uh, time consuming and labor intensive, but I think a lot of people really, but really enjoy really it. Fun. Right, really fun That's and good. I think we can go in depth and we can talk about a variety of different things. So totally. um, I'm really excited to continue and as I said uh, I think in the last podcast if you want to submit a question mm -hmm. please get on my email list right. and then send me right. an email and yes. in the title say podcast question totally. um, so that I will put it into that list yeah. and Erica will read it. Yes. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, friends. Uh, remember, the best is yet to come, and Have we're an literally awesome, awesome just getting started. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. Thanks. Baby. Thank you, Logan. So that does it for another episode of the STRU Podcast. As always, all links mentioned are in the show notes below. And if you found this show helpful, please leave a review on iTunes. If you're serious about short-term rental investing, be sure to check out str.university.